Hello, everyone. I'm sitting here with the beautiful Megan Wilcox, which I just feel like serendipitously came into my life. Uh, we connected over helping her launch and grow her business and really grow her offerings and all the ways that she helps other women. And now Megan is in the certification program, but you might be familiar with her because she is the founder of Soba Sistas. And I cannot wait to dive deeper into her bigger mission and purpose and also kind of her origin story to see how she got here. Um, but Megan is a very, very dear leader in my life. So I'm so excited she's here today. How are you doing, Megan? I'm doing absolutely amazing, Carolina. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So I have so many questions for you. But basically, when I first connected with you, you had this incredibly popular, engaged, growing Instagram account that was just like off the charts that you started like, I think, within the year of 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 that time frame or so called. And I was just like, wow, when women like that are able to harness so much community, so much engagement, it's like, there's a deeper purpose and a different reason, like bigger reason underneath that. And I was just so inspired to be like, you know, how can we leverage this? How we can help you grow your business, like make more money, leave your day job, all these kinds of things. Um, so tell us a little bit about like who you are today, what you do today and like what inspired you to start this Hey, gosh. Well, it's funny. If you would have asked me two and a half, three years ago, you know, if I'd be sitting here living the life that I'm living, I definitely would have been like, you're a liar. That's not true. That will never happen. Uh, so yeah, I'm a mom. I'm a single mom here. I live in Boston and I'm um, alcohol free now about almost a thousand days. So a little over two and a half years, which is just the longest. I feel like I've actually stuck with anything. And um yeah, I founded, I started my Instagram account, Soba Sisters, um, when I was six months sober. And I've just stayed consistent with it. And I had no idea it was going to turn into what it had. I started it just for accountability and for fun. I had I had a food page, like a gluten-free, dairy-free food page before Soba Sisters. And I just started for accountability. I, I had no plans of it turning into a community for women to quit drinking. It's just, it's absolutely crazy to me now, you know, where it's, it's gone. And it's, you know, I've, I've gotten to the point where I did leave my full-time career as a x-ray tech here, at, um, a busy ER in, in Boston. And I, I'm just really excited to see what the future brings. Wow. Well, I'm so happy you're on because I think your story is just so inspiring. Like, I think a lot of people get started in that sense of like, you know, the sober sphere, I think on Instagram is pretty open and welcoming. And it's a really great place, like you said, to form community and accountability and just share a little bit, like a little bit, not to say anonymously, but like Facebook is like, you're not connected to your uncle and like your, your sister-in-law and all that kind of stuff. It's like a little bit more of a safer space like that. And so you start that and you have like no idea it's going to take you to where you are today with like a full grown business and you're helping women and you've left your day job. I cannot wait to unpack that with you because I just think that you are inspiring so many other women who are feeling that call to get started too. But before we go there, let's like rewind a little bit more even. So, you know, you've been alcohol free, like you said, almost two and a half, three years or so. What was your life like before that? Like, how is, what did your relationship with alcohol look like? How did you decide to reevaluate it? Like you say you're a single mom as well. So does, did your prior divorce or anything like that have anything to do with all of this stuff? Like, tell us the the decade before. <laughs> yeah. So I would say when I was younger, you know, alcohol was pretty normal, you know, normal drinking, I guess you could say in my life. And it really didn't become a problem till I was older. So I was in my thirties and not that it was like good. I definitely have like some horror stories from my younger years, but it really was uh, when I found wine and the whole, you know, relax, it's been a hard day. I, I pretty much was a stay-at-home mom when my kids were young. And so, and I was alone a lot. My ex, my husband at the time worked a ton. And so just being home with the kids, I didn't have any family around. My family all lives in New York and I'm in Boston. I've been here 20 years. And so it got really lonely. And so turning to alcohol when my kids were little, but it wasn't problematic until my divorce in 2017, actually, yeah, 2017. And so it wasn't like an issue that broke up my marriage or anything like that. It, But when I went out on my own with the kids and had to learn how to like take care of myself financially and just the whole, honestly, the biggest thing I think was the guilt 
for getting divorced and have my kids were really young at the time. They were two and seven. And I just was like, I destroyed their life. We're divorced. Um, there was, I got, you know, an affair. And so I, not on my part, but, um, and that really like tore me up. So I was just like an emotional basket case, I guess you could say for at least like three years following my divorce. And so I was drinking basically every night that I wasn't working at least a bottle of wine and I worked overnight. So I knew there'd be like three nights a week that I, I wasn't drinking, but all those other nights I just poured myself into a bottle of wine till I could get through life. I had no idea how to like manage these really heavy emotions. And so that's really where things kind of took a turn for the worse. Yeah. So interesting. And, and as you went alcohol free, did you feel that like, let's say the three years that you're using alcohol, I mean, those were like some insane emotions you had to be going through. Like you say, the guilt, the sadness, the frustration, the anger, like all of those things that come up through that kind of life-changing event. Like when you cleared alcohol out of your life and I'll ask you how you did that and all that good stuff in a moment. But like, did you feel like you had to like start to like heal all those like wounds that started three years ago? Like now that you were alcohol free, like in a much deeper way. And like, what did that process look like? It's actually funny because now step in the part where I get my first coach and I had Googled one night because I was really having a lot of stress dealing with this, the dynamic of co-parenting was a, it was a freaking nightmare. It was the most stressful thing. It still is honestly, seven years later. So not something I talk about a lot, but it was very stressful. So I Googled one night, this is when I actually, right before I, I quit drinking, but I Googled help with a toxic relationship. Um, I don't know if I put coach or something. And this woman came up, her name's Dr. Heidi, and she was a chiropractor turned life coach who helped people who were in toxic relationships. And somehow I just, her name popped up, I started working with her and I didn't have really, I didn't have any money. I was struggling financially, completely living paycheck to paycheck, if not worse. I, I've always been really not good with money or that I wasn't, I'm getting better. And, um, but so Dr. Heidi helped me a lot deal with the dynamic of the relationship with my ex-husband, how it's uh, not to take you know, everything's so personal and to not respond. And, you know, she really just helps me navigate that. And once I could get that a little bit under control, then I tackled the, the not drinking and it, it, and then I was able to slowly, like, then I got into therapy and, and different things like that. So it, it was definitely, it's been a process and it didn't just magically fix everything, but I was like, I want to like figure this out. I, I don't want to be struggling emotionally on every level. I mean, I honestly was like Googling again, Googling, like, do I have a mental health disorder? Like, am I bipolar? I, I And I loved in one of the books I read, she, um, the girl had said that, like she was had diagnosed herself with, um, with borderline personality disorder because her moods were all over the place. Well, thankfully I, I don't have a mental health disorder. It really was the alcohol. And so I've been able to just stabilized my mental health. And it's the best that it's ever been. I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40. And my mental health, I can say, is the best that it's ever been in my life. Wow. What an inspiring story. And like, obviously, as you're, as you're healing from the divorce and the wounds that are formed there, like, it opens up this like, greater intuition, you know, and this greater introspection of like, okay, the alcohol's next. This is like what I want to change. So how did you like you go about the first six months? Like what was the what was like the impetus? Like what was your motivation back then? Like what did that look like for you, your first like six months alcohol free? Yeah. So I, I would say my rock bottom moment, it really wasn't something that happened. I always say rock bottom is more of a feeling than something that happened. You know, I didn't I didn't have a DUI. I didn't have like anything catastrophic, thank God, happened to me. I was performing really well at my job, getting like great reviews. But again, I was drinking every night. And so for me, if we go back to December 26th of 2020, so mid, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, it was holidays were always triggering for me. And I I drank that night, a bottle of wine, you know, not pretty typical. And I woke up in the middle of the night and was like, you know, at 3 a.m., like, what the heck is wrong with me? Why do I keep doing this? Just, I remember crying and calling out like to the universe. I was like, 
just please somebody help me. I, I can't do this anymore. And this time it was just, it was different, you know, like getting chills, just thinking about this night. Cause this night just really changed, you know, everything. I had tried to quit drinking and moderate for, for years. And so at this point I wasn't like, I need to stop drinking forever. I, I never thought about forever. And I had then won a scholarship to a sobriety course at this point through, um, we are the from the luckiest club and so that really just kind of sparked my whole so, sober journey i guess just having somebody believe in me and give me you know the scholarship and then i just started um started right there i, I don't know if i answered your question i feel like i went on off on a tangent remembering like that night um did i answer your question yeah, for sure that's so amazing <laughs> and and so what I'd love to pick out from the beginning is that you then mentioned that at six months, you started this Instagram account to help you stay like accountable and stuff. So you tell me the right number, but like you grow your Instagram account, I'm going to guess like pretty fast, like within a year, you get to how many followers? Within a year? I don't know. Maybe it was like 20,000 or something. Yeah. yeah I'm not okay, exactly so sure on the time. <laughs> Like, that is not normal, right? Like so many people will start an Instagram account and barely like move that number past like, you know, like 500 or something. So tell us like, why, how did that happen? How did you grow it that fast? Like, what were you doing? What were you sharing? Like what, tell us the secret. Wow. And it's funny because when I started my account and I'll tell you where I came up with the Soba Sisters name in a second, but when I started it, I literally thought I was like the first sober account. I was like, oh, I'm going to start a sober account, like alcohol free account, you know, and like I said, I had another Instagram page before that, that I worked so hard on. And I think I have 2,500 followers and I never thought, I, I thought that was like crazy. And so I think it really was just like consistency. I was posting pretty much every day and just trying to be real and trying to just share my story. And somehow I'd feel like I just I don't know if I had a couple, I never had anything go viral. I really didn't. I didn't have anything that's like in the millions or, or anything. I think it just was consistency and relatability, you know, me being a single mom, going through divorce and just sharing. I, I don't know. There really was no magic, magic to it. I've never bought a follower or, you know, I didn't even know that actually was a thing. Apparently you can buy followers and all of that. I, I've never done that. I just have stayed consistent. And that's, I feel like what the the secret sauce is like, I don't think I missed a day for like, <laughs> maybe like a few days. I'm better now and give myself, you know, boundaries and, and take breaks and stuff. But in the beginning, like, especially the first year or so it was every day might've been a slight obsession. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, that is amazing. And also just really inspiring to anyone who like, like just how fast something can change the course of your life. You know what I mean? Like you start out like not even intending it to be this big whole thing. And all of a sudden it turns into that. And at what point do you start to think to yourself, like this could be a business, like I could actually make money and help people with this? Yeah. So in October of 2021, I started hosting free sobriety support meetings, I guess you could call it. And I did them every Wednesday, twice a day, and sometimes more for a long time. I don't know. I feel like it was like a year that I did these like just free meetings and then trying to figure out like, oh, like how can I make this into a a business? And, you know, I had a lot of like issues to deal with around like charging for, for this type of thing. And I struggled with that, you know, a lot. And I feel like I don't really anymore. But yeah, it was just, I think, again, like I started Soba Sisters. It was a a group of three moms in my town. We are all single moms and we were all in a group chat and we were like, we want to stop drinking. We're drinking too much. Like we were all kind of doing the same thing. And so we started a group chat and then I was like, I'm going to start an Instagram account. And at one point I, I went back and got my health coaching certification at the Institute of Integrated Nutrition. And that's when I was like, Oh, coaching. Like, and I had had a coach, Dr. Heidi, that had helped me so much. And I was like, this is what I was meant to do. And I remember she I went on her podcast a few months ago and she had just put it so beautifully and said, you know, I've been an x-ray tech for 10 years. And she said, you know, you were just being prepared for your real purpose in life. And that's to help other women, um, you know, with their struggles with alcohol. And I was like, wow, like when you put it like that, you know, like all the things that I've been through, it's, it's worth it. 
to me. Yeah. Amazing. And like the way that you've been able to build so much momentum, like it just keeps proving that this is your purpose, you know, like the universe wouldn't just like grant you like all of this incredible, like you said, followers and just so much like success. If it's like Megan, like this is what you're supposed to be doing. Maybe let's reevaluate, you know, your, your x-ray technician job and like commit to this. I love that. And even if obviously it's not always like this big viral Instagram success we get, but it's like something within us that's telling us like we, we, we want more both for our own life and our own sense of fulfillment, but also like the impact that that can make with other people. Because now that like Megan, I'm going to ask you your next question is going to be about like, what does your business look like today? Like now that Megan is able to do this full time, she's actually able to help more people, you know what I mean? So it's like even more of an impact to be able to like really step into your purpose instead of just treat it like as a hobby that you do like on the side, because you get to make a bigger impact. So now looking at August, 2023, Like, what is your business up to now? Like, what do you, do you host retreats? Do you do like programs? Like, tell me about it today. Yeah. So today it's just the most wonderful thing, really. It's such a huge part of me. Uh, I host monthly group coaching groups. And I mean, I've had some women that started back in, um, I think, you know, it's funny because I was working together with you and one day I was like, I want to do group coaching and then just talking with you. And the next thing you know, it was like, okay, I I did it. You know, like I just needed like that push to help me. And I did that back and it actually was December and it's, I haven't stopped since. And so the group coaching is like a a huge thing. It's kind of like an ongoing thing that people can um, keep signing up for. And yes, retreats, like, which is just absolutely insane to me still, you know, when I did my first Bali retreat last April, I remember standing there like, you know, wow, this is, I've always dreamed of this. And, you know, and then I was like, wait a minute, scratch that. I was like, I've never dreamed of this. I didn't even know where Bali was. I've never been actually even on a retreat. And here I am like hosting my own retreat. So it was just absolutely insane to me. And before I even left Bali, I rebooked my next one, which will be in April of 2024. And we're going to Punta Cana in October um, of this year. And I'm telling Carolina, I didn't even have a passport like until I was 38 years old. I didn't travel really anywhere. I lived very safe and just was like, okay, with a mediocre life. Uh, I was afraid of everything. I was afraid of traveling. And it just wasn't like a thing to me to, to go places really. And so now that it's, I'm hosting retreats and I'm traveling and it's, I mean, I'm coming to your retreat um, in September for the for the certification program and my calendar is booked with travel and it's just absolutely insane. So yeah, so the retreats, we got the group coaching and, and I do like some private coaching, but honestly, my favorite, my passion is doing the groups because I just feel like it's so magical just seeing the women support each other and realize like, wow, like we're not, we're not alone. Well, what I love about your story so much is it's also like intimate. So yes, Megan and I have worked together and I've helped her grow her business. uh, Like she said, since December. And so being able to see like these wins in real time just makes you so proud and just so happy for you, you know, and like being able to leave your day job and just commit full time to this and continue expanding, like continue saying yes and more, you know, and because that not only helps you, it also helps the women that you're holding space for, you know, in your programs. And so I'm just like really, really thrilled about that. But I also hope that to the audience listening, like, this happened for you pretty fast, I'm going to say. And for you, maybe it feels like when we're actually in it, we're like, how, why can't it happen even faster? But like, if you really look at like the, the how long you've been alcohol free and like getting started six months into it, like you probably had no idea, like three years ago, you couldn't have even thought of this, like you were just saying. So it's like, just how open we should be to like having the faith that our lives can change like that fast, you know, from like not having a passport to now traveling around the world and getting paid to do it. Like that is Megan's reality now, right? To like not even knowing that she wanted to be a coach to going full like 100% into that and hosting group programs and all that kind of stuff. Like that's what I think is so amazing about how time works is it like almost shrinks when you not only go for being alcohol free, but also really committing to your personal development. You're able to really go after the things you never thought were possible, which you are just such a great example of that. Um, So that being said, you have joined the certification program. I'm so excited to have you there to keep deepening your coaching skills. 
and are just really such a good example for other women, for other leaders as well of like how to really work through any like limiting beliefs, any ways of like opportunities and challenges that come for you. So super curious. You mentioned earlier that you were living like paycheck to paycheck. And there's probably, like you said, a lot of like that guilt associated to, especially as being a mom and just having people to provide for. Um, so what did your family think or like just people around you? Like, how did they approach you becoming a coach? And what are some of the ways that you've had to kind of find other people to help really empower you to keep moving on this journey? Yeah, well, a few things right off the bat. And the last thing you mentioned was finding people. And I think that's been such a huge part is I do have like, um, you know, a few really amazing friends that I've had for a long time. And one best friend in particular has really been like my biggest cheerleader. And she's been with me through seeing me at my worst, like with the whole drinking thing through my divorce. And just, she's always been there, like pushing me and really, even when I used to be able to, wouldn't be able to say affirmations and she'd be like, just look in the mirror and say, I love you. And I'm like, no, I can't. And little things like that. So just surrounding yourself with the right people and people who bring you up and don't knock you down and believe in you really makes a huge difference. My family, um, uh, I feel like, didn't really understand it, especially the whole social media thing. And, you know, I remember my sister who's a nurse and so is my mom and they've, you know, just done all the things that you're supposed to do in life and they have a nice life, but very safe. So my sister at first, when I told her I was going to do my Instagram account was like, you know, you shouldn't do that. It's, you don't want to like mess around with like people, mental health and, you know, and like alcohol and like, just basically kind of shot it down. But I was like, something inside me was like, no, keep going. You've done this your entire life where, you know, I wanted to go to medical school when I was younger and my family was like, no, it's too much money and you're going to have, you know, student loans and, you know, all these reasons to not do it. So I never did. And I was like, looking back at how many things that that actually has happened in my life. And I'm like, damn, like I would be so much further if I would have listened to my intuition and not asked other people their opinions. Now my family's super supportive and they love it. And they're so happy for me that, you know, I'm just getting my life together. And as far as like the financial thing too, (laughs) eight, actually about eight years ago, I filed bankruptcy when I was like 32. It was the most, one of the most embarrassing things in my life that I had to go through. And again, like I was never good with money. I wanted to be, I just, I just didn't have the skills at the time, you know? And so that's something also that you and I worked on. And just, so I started reading books on it and starting just like learning about it, starting, I had three jobs. I've worked pretty much every weekend since I stopped drinking to just not be out spending money, to be trying to make money and not be going out and all those things. So that's been like a whole nother journey in itself is trying to like get myself in a financially okay spot. You know, I I think one of my, my two goals for last year were to have a little money saved and to travel. And now I'm doing both those things and it's still mind blowing to me. So anyone who's struggling financially, like you can get out, if I can get out of a hole, I mean, I had like a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt that I just kept racking up to try to build some hole inside of me and make myself feel better. And it wasn't even like designer shoes. I wish I had like all this fancy stuff to show you. It really, I don't even know what it was. I have nothing to show for it, but um, it's been really cool to just keep improving in that area. And hopefully, you know, I know someday it'll be much better even than it is today. Yeah. Wow. That is such an amazing story. And I love too how like recognizing that, you know, it depends obviously on like our family and certain members, but it's also pretty typical that like, when we step into this like new alcohol free space and we step into coaching and the online world, like it's also new that like you and I and other leaders in this, like we all have this vision and it's like very typical for other people to just not see or understand the vision. And it's not like they're bad people by any means. It's just like, you are a visionary and it's not going to be normal for other people to understand that. And so one of the things I see that sometimes women make a mistake about is that they'll like share their beautiful dream and like all of their, like whatever they just created with maybe the wrong person. And they kind of like, will, you know, dismiss it or just make them feel small about it, you know? So I think it's really important, like you said, to find your people, find like 
find other people who are doing what you want to do or are you're already doing you know what I mean like those people will never dismiss you and especially someone ahead of you will never laugh at you like a a black belt in karate is not going to make fun of like a beginner in karate they're going to be so proud of them and just cheering them on and totally understanding so I love that reframe but also then the financial like health like money yes is like a practical logical thing in our bank accounts and our debt and our credit cards but it's also so much up here in our minds and like i think megan like you really healed your relationship with money like just like we have relationships with alcohol like we have a relationship with money and like to tell yourself new stories now you know like um, i'm not an f up or i can make a lot of money i can save money i can build you know financial legacy for my family and my like generational wealth like all those things are so worthwhile for a woman to choose to do and especially for you you know because of that kind of story that you had that complete 180 so I'm pretty excited to see where that's going to take you because I feel like you could also like start teaching on that because like you've done the transformation you've been like there and now you're all the way here you know what I mean Mm -hmm. yeah honestly I feel like I could too now. And I, I think about that. I'm like, maybe I'm not even supposed to do like be an alcohol free life coach. Maybe it's like a money mindset or helping people recover after like divorce or major like life changing financial issues. And that's the cool thing that anything is possible. I do believe that there's still like really big things that are in store for me. And I'm just trying to go with the flow and, and keep my head down and, and stay working, you know, and it's funny how you said to like, just know who you're going to share your dreams with, because I think, and this comes to even too, for anyone who's just quitting drinking, know your audience, you know, because not everyone's going to support it. Not everyone's going to understand it. And so you tell the wrong person and they could talk you out of it. And this one decision could change your whole life. So be really cognizant of who you're sharing, you know, your aspirations to not drink with, because it it could, I hear it all the time that like people don't have supportive people in their family, which is crazy when you think about it, but it it happens for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's so amazing. Like anytime you're trying to like improve your life and become a better version of yourself and heal your past and heal your stories and elevate your identity too, like, especially our self-worth, like when we believe we deserve better, whether it's through our success or through money or through love or connection, like it just rifles people's feathers, you know? And it's like the biggest lesson in learning how to let go of what like other people's opinion of you are and just be like, no, this is my life. I am the star of my life. I'm not going to give up that center stage to all of this like audience members who don't have a, shouldn't have a say in it, you know what I mean? And I think that's the most like important thing we could ever do for our self-worth. And just with that being said, like if you could go back and talk to the version of you that existed like four years ago or three years ago or whatever, what would you tell her? Mm, Oh my God. That makes me just want to cry thinking about it. Yeah. I don't, I would just be like, you know, keep, keep going. Don't give up on yourself. Like life isn't going to always be hard forever and, and believe in yourself and yeah, I, I don't know. That's uh, that like makes me so emotional because it, it was really hard for a long time, and I didn't like myself. I didn't believe in myself. It, every day was a struggle mentally and emotionally. And so, just to think back, you know, I definitely would just probably give her a big hug and be like, "Just let's go." <laughs> I love that. I love that energy. All right, Megan, tell us a little bit about where we can find you if anyone wants to connect with you or learn more about your programs. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm always over there hanging out. Soba Sisters. That's it with the Boston accent. That's where the Soba came from. Um, definitely you can email me at Megan at Soba Sisters.com. You can go to my website. Honestly, Instagram's probably the the quickest thing. I, I try to answer every message that is sent to me. I'm really good about that. So if I don't answer you the first time, message me again and I will definitely get back to you. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to include all of that in the show notes so you can get those beautiful links. And just one more question. I love how you mentioned earlier how like the secret to your success, like with Instagram growth has been consistency. And, you know, you're a single mom, you've got, you had three jobs at one point, like you've got a lot going on and now you're running programs and clients and all this stuff. So what would you say to someone who wants to be consistent, but they think that they don't have enough time? Like, how were you able to make the time for what mattered? 
Yeah. So I want to have like compassion and be like, you know, it's okay. You can make time. But honestly, like you have time for what you want to make time for, you know, get up earlier if, if you need to, to, to journal or, you know, whatever that might be, take things off your plate. If I always say, I'm like, order takeout if you need to. And just to try to give yourself more time somewhere, like make an easier dinner, you, you know, it's just to leave the laundry if you don't, you know, if it means that you're going to, for your mental health or self-care or anything like that. So just kind of like prioritize the things that you have in your life and take things off and don't feel guilty about it. I love that. It's like permission to not have to do all the things and recognizing that like, there's probably a whole category of things that we all think we have to do that really don't matter at the end of the day. And like, we could be substituting for our passion projects and the things that really do matter. And it's just kind of a reframe. And I think, again, like we we talked about alcohol, we talked about money, like, oh my gosh, relationship with time, right? Like that's such another good one that can be definitely not only healed, but also improved on. Like we all have the same hours in the day, you know what I mean? And I've been there where it's like some moments in life are just so busy and overwhelming, but it's like, but I made them like that. You know what I mean? It's like there was- yeah right? Like we always have that choice of like what we're committed to and what we're doing. So I really appreciate that reframe. All right. We're going to include all the show notes in the links so that people can find you and DM you. And Megan, I just really appreciate you being here, not only to share your alcohol-free story, but how this idea to just stay accountable to your journey and start posting on Instagram literally turned into this huge platform a business, we're able to leave your day job, host retreats around the world in a really short period of time. So let's just remember that if it was possible for Megan, it's possible for you too. And if you're interested in becoming a coach, we do have the next Empowered AF Coach Certification join, sorry, launching next March. So be sure to get on the wait list for that. Um, and Megan, I just wanted to thank you so much. I love your story. And it was really cool to get to know you even better today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I can't wait to meet you very soon in real life. <laughs> Bye.